All right, so good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call on Wednesday, March 17th, uh, 2021. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day, I guess. I hope you guys are, are wearing green. <laughs> um, so uh, today we're going to have a, a demo of a new export that um, UVA has built locally for their Samago um, export. So we're going to take a look at that and then if we have some time left we'll um, do a few JIRAs. Um, but uh, first we'll start off with some quick announcements. So um, one quick announcement is that um, RC or RCO3 is currently out um, for Sakai 21 and we're hoping to release 21 um, any day now. So it could have been you know, yesterday didn't quite make it yesterday. It might be today, it might be tomorrow, but it's imminent. So um, so Sakai 21 will be out this week if um if all goes well and uh you can go ahead and take a look at what's out there now if you like on nightly but um but we should have the official release very very shortly um also if um if you've not already seen the notice on the um the listserv the uh, um open aperio call for proposals is currently open now through the 26th so it's a pretty tight turnaround for proposals. If you get it in on time, you get entered to win um, uh, a Samsung, Samsung tablet, I believe. And they're doing a prize drawing for um, all the on-time proposal submissions. So um, if you're interested in being in part of that lottery, um, be sure to get your proposal in on time. Um, does anybody else have any other announcements? All right. Um, the agenda link is in the chat. If you've not already clicked on that and signed in, please do. And um, and now I'm going to turn it over to Tiffany, who's going to show us um, the new exporter that UVA has um, in, included in their instance of Sakai. Uh, hi, Lola. Um, I was trying to share my webcam so I could uh, you know, wave to you guys. <laughs> I don't know if it worked, um, but um, so uh, at UVA we got um, some questions from instructors. We had uh, this was from coming from the chemistry department primarily, uh, and they were using some other testing engine uh, instead of tests and quizzes in Sakai uh, because they didn't like the export primarily. Um, so they're doing a, um, oh, hi. <laughs> um, they're doing a, um, a large placement test and it's cross site and cross course. So um, they wanted to be able to uh, compare the content, the student uh, submissions and responses from these various uh, courses and assessments. And uh, there really wasn't a good way for them to do that. We actually weren't aware at the time of the, um, the metadata, the question metadata options, uh, which they could have used for some of that. Uh, but I don't think it would have gotten it at what they really desired. So what they wanted was both more information and less information uh, in the export, which is a little bit uh, interesting um, to say the least. So they wanted to be able to turn off certain things. Um, for example, the comments field in the export, because they were never going to use that. It was a you know multiple choice, true, false, that kind of test, not um, essays where they might want to provide comments as feedback to students. So I'm going to first show you the old export uh, that they weren't happy with. Uh, you may be familiar with it, but um, just in case. Um, I'm going to open one up here. And uh, we've called that the classic export in our new um, export screen. Um, and so the export includes, you know, basically your student information, names and usernames, um, and uh, the assessment score, overall score, um, and then uh, the individual questions uh, responses. And some of these responses are not ideally formatted. So like if you have a multiple choice, it won't tell you 
which one is A, B, C, or whatever. You also don't have the question text anywhere in the export file. Oh, I should have opened Excel before this. I don't know why it's acting up on me. Uh, come on, Excel. Um, so let me move this out of the way while it's still opening. Um, so this, this file was uh, not adequate for our users' needs. And so we took a look at the uh, system that they uh, were using, uh, the exports from that, and, um, and also the exports produced by several other systems like Qualtrics and Google uh, Forms and things like that. Uh, and uh, David Hutchins um, came up with this, this really wonderful export, formatted export. Um, and so we have options here to turn on and off various aspects of the export. So the first piece is this info block. Oh, here's the old export. Uh, sorry, it took a while for Excel to load up. But um, just so you can get an idea, we have the, the usernames, you know, student names and, and usernames. We have an order of submission. If there are multiple submissions by the same student, you see a one, two, three here for student three who submitted three times. Um, and then your, your answers are all kind of, you know, you have your parts and part scores, um, and then you have your final score for the assessment. And then your answers are, are not the greatest. So like you'll have a uh, question one response, and if it's like, multiple choice, you don't see which one is A, B, or C, or, you know, whatever. Um, and then for each question, there's a comments uh, column for grader comments. So we have graders comments for the overall assessment, and then graders comments for each question, uh, assuming the instructor has entered any uh, in there. And the other piece is that it's all in one big row. So if you have 100 questions, this is like scrolling all the way, um, even if it's broken down into different parts. So, you know, we have here like part five, part four, they're all just flowing together in one giant table, which can be useful, especially for instructors who um, want to apply their own kinds of, uh, you know, Excel uh, data analyses. Um, but for most instructors, it's, it's not very helpful. Uh, so what, uh, what we developed, what David developed and I tested, um, we started with this info block. So this gives us the title of the assessment, assessment ID, the creator, uh, when it was created, the site that it's in, and the total point value. And this is one of the options that can be turned off uh, in the export for those who aren't interested in seeing it. Um, and that just takes away that piece. Now we also have in here an export preview. Um, and I know Terry's gonna ask about the accessibility of that. I will get to that in a bit. Um, so this actually wasn't originally intended to be part of the project. <laughs> the export preview um, is an open source uh, library um, uh, Excel generator that uh, David put in just for testing uh, when he was testing the export and setting it up. And we all really liked it. We thought it looked really cool. So we ended up keeping it um, and uh, making some uh, accessibility improvements. So it can actually be uh, tabbed right into, uh, so you can tab into it and you know scroll around and, and read all of these uh, little tables. Um, and you can also access the various uh, tabs of the export file uh, up here. There are a couple more uh, accessibility improvements that we want to do to it, uh, namely an escape Patch. Uh, so once you get tabbed down into this um, export preview, uh, you can, you know, have it a hotkey to get out of it. Um, and I'd like some help from Chris Knapp or others in the accessibility working group to determine what would be the best, um, you know, hotkey to create for that. Um, so anyway, uh, sorry to sort of jump around here. Um, the First tab uh, in the export is the overview. And again, you can turn this off if you don't want to have it in your export file. You know, if you just want to go with the student responses, for example. The overview provides you information uh, that you saw in the original export file. So we have our names of the students and usernames, the submission order. Um, and these are all broken down um, 
alternating colors per student so that you can see, for example, here, student three with the three submissions are in a slightly darker gray uh, than the uh, students above and below. So it's just a, a little bit better visual uh, cue of whose um, submission we're looking at or set of submissions we're looking at. So we have the total score. Uh, this is new information. So start time and end time for the assessment was a request from some of our instructors. Um, the amount of time that students take on it. Uh, instructors were particularly interested in this for um, assessments that are not timed because that information is not provided um, in the score screen for an untimed assessment. So instructors were interested in seeing the amount of time that students took on the test, so we've included that. Uh, the number of correct auto scored responses. So these are the, um, you know, like your multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, that kind of thing. Um, and then here's the assessment comment, which is that overall uh, comment field that the instructor uh, would enter while grading. Um, and uh, so again, comments, if you don't want them, you can turn them off. And so you don't have to see that uh, in your export file uh, assuming you haven't entered any, you might not need it. Um, so our second uh, tab in the spreadsheet uh, is student responses. And again, this can be turned off if, if you don't need it. Um, so you can see here, uh, as I uncheck and check these boxes, the export preview is updating uh, dynamically each time. Um, so the student responses tab, uh, again, it includes the info block. All of the tabs include the info block when it's enabled. Um, and in these uh, student responses, we now have, for each part, it has its own table uh, by default. And if you don't like that, if you want to go back to having uh, just one long scrolling table, you can uncheck separate parts, and then it will collapse it uh, into a single one. I may not have clicked that correct. There we go. Okay, so now uh, now that I've unchecked separate parts, uh, you can see I only have a single uh, table here uh, with the student responses, and it's just going to scroll uh, to the right, just like uh, we have in the current, you know, the older format of export. Um, and it'll go down uh, to like part two, part three, and so on um, as we scroll through. I have a lot of questions in part one because it was multiple choice. So there were a lot of different uh, types of multiple choice to uh, deal with. So you can see here's part one, and then we go into part two student responses. And um, this is also keeping the uh, part scores and information together with the part. Um, so that was another piece that we wanted to do to, to have that information sort of more together uh, with the appropriate responses. And again, there are some uh, colors here to indicate um, you know, to delineate visually uh, the different responses and the different students. Um, so then the types of responses, I'll, I'll actually get to that when I open this, uh, export this spreadsheet and open it up in Excel because this is a pretty big uh, file to scroll through with the preview. <laughs> um, so then in question details, uh, this was another piece that instructors uh, requested. They wanted to see the question text in their export file and the labels for the options. So they, and finally, the other piece was that comparison across uh, course and across site. So one of the things they really wanted was a question correlation. And what this value is, this random value assigned to each question, is when you generate the export uh, for the first time of a question, it creates in the system a, a random value here. And this question correlation, every time you generate a new export, searches the system and says, does a question with this identical question text exist somewhere? And if it does, it gives it the same correlation number. So you could take several export files from different tests and say, okay, part one, question one here, if they're randomized is this value. And you know, maybe part two, question one in another test is that same question. And then you can compare those results uh, more easily um, by looking for uh, the correlated question uh, values. 
And um, so each of the questions uh, has the type, the question text, um, and the labels and options uh, when uh, those are relevant for like multiple choice and the correctness. This was another piece um, that instructors really wanted was to know whether the answer was a correct or incorrect answer. Um, and that's the case in the student responses tab as well. It tells you uh, whether or not their answer was uh, correct. So you can see multiple choice um, has the, the different labels and options. Um, F true false has just the options you know true and false and the correctness um, fill in the blank uh, shows you the different uh, blanks so for example if there are two uh, blanks you have um, each answer option and then of course they're all going to say correct uh, we want to take that column out that's a future improvement um, and uh, so then you have your uh, matching uh, which option uh, it is the labels for those options, um, the text of the options and correctness. Um, some of these are very long questions. Uh, and then numeric response is similar to uh, fill in the blank. You have the values uh, and, and correctness. Um, your uh, calculated questions show you the labels like the, the um, X, Y, and Z are the uh, various, um, what are they called, variables uh, that you put in. And then it has the values, minimum, maximum, and number of decimal places, uh, and tolerance for the answer. Um, your file upload is, for students, it's just going to tell you to, to download them separately. Um, and then uh, multiple choice survey, these are your simple survey questions, uh, shows you the option possibilities and selections for matrix of choices. Uh, and finally, the item analysis tab already exists in uh, the export, but um, in this version, it includes the question instructions. Uh, this is something that we want to improve. Uh, right now, it's showing little HTML uh, elements for the question text. Um, but uh, that's that's a future improvement to clean that up and um, and make it match the question details tab. But you see here we have the sort of standard um, uh, item analysis uh, that exists already. It just again um, has some colors and and whatnot to delineate better uh, visually the different uh, options. All right, so let me uh, go to student responses. Does anybody have any questions at this point? All right. Oh, and and by the way, you can also turn off the uh, the question correlation value if that's uh, not of interest to you. Um, so again, uh, these various um, options you can take away any of the tabs, item analysis, student responses, and whatnot. Um, the comments and the question correlation. Um, all right. So let's take a look at uh, the student responses from the new export. Hopefully Excel will cooperate with me this time. All right, so um, in the student responses, uh, the different types of questions provide different information. Um, your um, multiple choice is going to tell you the response letter as well as the choice. So in this case, you know, A, single choice, um, C, multiple correct, multiple selection, et cetera. Uh, it tells you the correctness, whether the answer is correct or incorrect, and the score for that question. Um, so uh, that's another piece that was added was the um, score for each uh, individual question uh, that the student received. Um, so for example, here's a, uh, a question that gives uh, negative markings. So you can see the student got negative 10 points here, um, for example. Um, and the, the multiple choice, um, multiple correction, you have uh, the selections, uh, one, two, and three. So you have your A, B, and C you know, for multiple choice, multiple correct. And when a student selects an incorrect answer, you also have that, uh, oops, excuse me, the incorrect one uh, that tells you which selection is, is correct or incorrect. 
All right, I'm trying not to uh, scroll too fast. Let me know if I am. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, part two here, I have um, the true false. Uh, so this is again, very basic. You have your, your true or false, correct or incorrect, uh, and the point values. Um, for um, fill in the blanks, uh, you have the, uh, the response for just single blank uh, correctness is always gonna be correct as I mentioned before. Um, well, no, I guess not. For students, it, it won't be because you have uh, incorrect answers. So it'll tell you uh, if it's correct or incorrect, and then the um, the score that they receive for that uh, answer. And then if you have multiple blanks, it'll tell it'll number them. So blank one, blank two, and so on, uh, and uh, and the total score for the question, um, depending on on how they answered that. Um, so for uh, matching, you have um, the selections. We, we call these selections, selection one, selection two. Um, and again, it has the letter label, um, A, B, C, and so on, uh, the correctness of each selection uh, and the total points for those uh, questions. Um, oh, sorry, let me try to expand this window a little bit. Um, trying to remember which uh, questions are in part four. Let's see here. Okay, part four was matching. And I've got part five is numeric response. Okay. So part five, um, our numeric response is gonna look very similar to the, um, the fill in the blanks uh, with the response correctness and, and score. And again, the comments fields are there if, if you've entered any. Um, again, for uh, calculated questions, we have the label of the, um, the variable, uh, in this case, Z uh, for the answer and uh, correctness and score. And then um, for manually graded questions, um, for file upload questions, it gives you an indication that the uploaded files must be downloaded separately. Um, it gives you the text for short answer essay. Um, the response of you know, recordings must be, uh, I think it accessed via the assessment score screen uh, for uh, an audio uh, response question. Um, and then uh, for the, um, the survey questions, you have uh, just the, the basic responses and there's no score uh, because they're not scored. Um, this is a, uh, a survey matrix of choices, so it has a possible score, uh, but in this case, I didn't give it a point value. Um, so I think that's it. Any questions, comments? This is pretty impressive. Um, I really like the, the preview and um, the, the additional formatting does make it a lot easier to parse visually um, for folks that are interested in just sort of pulling out some specifics. Um, I know probably the, the biggest question on my mind and I'm sure maybe others as well is will this be contributed back <laughs> and when we really hope so uh, we really want to uh, this does rely on the same um, back end that uh, site builder uses and okay. I know there was some concern about that being contributed back mm -hmm. um, so the endpoints that are used to develop this is actually an entirely new export um, it's not built on the old one and it doesn't modify the old one. That's how we're able to have uh, both the classic and um, the new export um, available to our instructors. Now we wanted to do that anyway, um, to have both available because there are instructors who um, are using their own kinds of algorithms and things to, uh, to analyze uh, the data from it. Um, and, you know, who may just find it easier to read. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly uh, 
can be easier for accessibility uh, for screen reader user. Um, so yeah, we want to contribute it back. Uh, and, and hopefully soon, we are currently working on our 20 upgrade uh, at UVA. And um, so hopefully all of the stuff that we've got locally will be easier to contribute back once that's complete. Uh, this was originally built on a sort of hybrid system that uh, was somewhere between 11.2, initially 11.2, with lots of backports from 12 and 19. So it was kind of a... 12 through 19-ish system. <laughs> um, and, uh, and right now it's, it's going into 20 uh, locally. But yeah, we, we definitely want to contribute it back. Um, yeah, well, I think it would be a great contribution if we can get the whole architecture thing aligned um, so that it works with the, the community code because I think this would be something that a lot of folks would be interested in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, we're really proud of it. Um, it took uh, about a year of work. I mean, a significant amount of work. Uh, two developers uh, worked on it. Uh, many hours of testing. My colleague, Andrew Hopoon, who's also on the call right now, um, helped create some of the data for me to test with. Uh, took a lot of quizzes. Um, so it, it was four of us working many, many hours uh, to develop and, and test it. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of it personally, even though I didn't develop it, I, I just tested it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and we do have some future improvements that we wanna make. Like I mentioned, the um, sort of escape key uh, to get out of the preview once you've tabbed down into it, because if you have a lot of students, this is, I mean, you're tabbing through a lot of content here. <laughs> um, so, uh, we, we also wanted to add, um, let me think, there, there were a couple of requests from instructors. I can try to find out what those are um, that we have already um, sort of in the pipeline in our local JIRAs to um, eventually do. Um, let me pull that up real quick and I can tell you what they are. We have a couple of like little things that were just visually weird, like that um, uh, the fact that the fill in the blank on question details always says correct for everything because there's it only shows correct answers. Um, but I think the sort of the difficulty of taking that out was that it would also take out the correctness of student responses, which we need. Um, so uh, the export for anonymous release assessments, uh, there's a little bit of an issue with that that we wanna fix. Um, that's for an assessment release to anonymous users. Uh, for the multiple choice surveys, uh, they're not uh, displaying the answers correctly. Um, we uh, want to improve the uh, correctness indicator for multiple choice, multiple selection when certain correct answers are not selected. Um, because it notes the correct ones, but it doesn't note which ones are the incorrect, uh, you know, the failure to select uh, are not shown. Um, and um, the other improvements that we wanna make, so those were just the sort of outstanding issues. Um, the other improvements are allowing the export to present scores based on view preferences. So currently it always shows you all of the students on every page. Um, and that's true of the classic export as well. And that's even if the assessment is released to a particular group only. So we want to uh, make that, and I, I think uh, John Buckingham also had a JIRA out about this, um, that you know instructors at both of our institutions, uh, UPA and Pepperdine have requested uh, the ability to choose from these view kind of drop downs, uh, view highest versus all submissions or last versus all submissions, depending on your recorded score setting, and uh, to view them by group so that you're only exporting, um, you know, content from a particular group and uh, and one submission only instead of all submissions if there are multiple. Um, there's a little bit more data. Uh, that we'd like to add to the uh, overview info block. Um, 
that piece is the total score and percentage. Uh, we've had a couple of instructors request a total score and percentage for all students. That does show on a per student basis in the user activity report. It's the only place it shows uh, in Samago, which is weird. Um, <laughs> Um, we wanted to improve the display of the question text when HTML or embedded content is included, and uh, we saw that in the item analysis um, tab where there was some HTML showing for the question text. Um, the ability to include correct or incorrect answer feedback was requested uh, as an optional column by one of our instructors. Uh, so the automatic feedback when you're creating questions of correct or incorrect answers, uh, they'd like that to be included in the export. Um, another instructor requested the metadata in the item analysis tab. Oddly enough, although the question metadata appears in the item analysis in um, tests and quizzes, this tab here, uh, it does not appear in the export. And that's true in the classic export as well. Uh, and uh, I'd also like to include part titles in the student responses column grouping and question details column heading, uh, if that's possible for, um, um, you know, to identify parts, because in case an instructor puts like, a, you know, part one multiple choice or something like that, it would be helpful for them. So Terry, search for students or groups. Um, that would sort of be the the export by group um, desired feature. I mean, I hadn't considered uh, a filter for just like one student to export. Um, And uh, Jennifer asks if it would replace the current export. Um, so currently, no, uh, we have both of them. And I think there are instructors who would be unhappy uh, to lose the classic export um, just because they are using their own sort of data analysis of that spreadsheet. Um, ultimately, we would like to put the formatted export at the top. The reason the classic export button is currently at the top is because of this export preview that once you tab down into it, you have to tab all the way back out or all the way back forward or all the way forward to get out of it. Um, and I think once we have some kind of escape key for that, we could prioritize the formatted export to the top of the page. Um, and Dave said, uh, it sounds like our internal QA process was solid. Uh, so we hope so, we try our best. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, if, if you're gonna have anybody test Samago, Tiffany's definitely the person to do it. <laughs> so, well, this looks great. It's very impressive. Um, and I, I do hope that we're able to get it in the community code. Um, at some point because I think it would be a, a really nice addition to um, to the options there. So thank you so much for sharing it with us. And mm -hmm. are there any other questions for Tiffany? No. Nope. Okay. And I had one other comment. Um, it may be we may be able to use this. Uh, it would be nice if we could use this preview uh, code for some of the other Excel uh, exports. I mean, th that's just a thought of mine. I don't know if that's even possible, but I think there are some other Excel exports uh, in the system that, that potentially could benefit from the preview. Yeah, that's a good thought. There are a few spots where you have the option to export Excel, so sometimes it's nice to see a preview of what you're going to get. Cool. Okay, so we do have a little bit of time left, um, and uh, we have a few JIRAs that we carried over um, from last time. So um, let's see, it looks like a few were, were kind of um, sent our way by Sean, probably from JIRA Triage. And then there was one that, um, that Tiffany wanted to add about the schedule tool. Tiffany, do you want to talk about the schedule one first? Uh, sure. 
Sure, we had um, a number of instructors request um, the ability to uh, schedule notifications, email notifications to students. So um, I, I don't know how many we, we've had recent requests, but I think at least three or four, maybe. Is that correct, Andrew? Um, and uh, so right now, the calendar does not allow you to schedule notifications. You can schedule an announcement, uh, a single announcement with a notification um, in the announcements tool, but it can't be um, scheduled as a recurring announcement. So uh, for example, these instructors wanted to have a reminder go out every um, you know, week for uh, you know, a particular Thing in course, like don't forget to bring your whatever to lab, or <laughs> you know, don't forget to finish your homework uh, by Thursday, or something like that. Um, so uh, I think the calendar does have recurring events, but it doesn't have the option to make any notifications. And um, announcements doesn't have any any recursion uh, feature. So. Um, they really wanted uh, an email notification sort of similar to Outlook where you know they could schedule and it would go out uh, every however many days or weeks um, that notification was to be scheduled. Uh, so I found this old JIRA uh, about it um, that had been resolved as sort of a won't fix at one point. Um, and uh, it's, it's been out there for a long time, this request. Uh, and, and we've had quite a few <laughs> instructors asking about it. Um, so I was wondering if there's interest from others, if you could upvote it or uh, or whatever, uh, <laughs> to uh, to try to, to get this to happen. I know there was some discussion about uh, changing the calendar to the open calendar, whatever it's called. Um, and, it's full uh, and calendar. That's it, full calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if that's sort of a component of that um, that could be brought in, but um, as you can see, this this year I had a resolution of won't fix, and we've had quite a few. I mean, there are nine votes on it, so there seems yeah, to be this, quite a bit of interest. Jira is super old. <laughs> it is super old. It is super old. 2005. So people have been wanting this for a while. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, going back to 2010, uh, we, we got our first request, a couple of requests in, uh, 2017 for this that I had commented on, um, you know, the, the, um, use case that one instructor presented was she has a monthly quiz and wanted to publish each month's quiz in advance. But the Samago notifications, when you send one, sends it on publish of the quiz and not a scheduled day before the quiz starts or you know, immediately when the quiz becomes available. Uh, that's another problem that the, the instructors have presented that you know, assignments and tests and quizzes, the notifications uh, on publish are, are immediate and not uh, when the assignment or assessment actually becomes available to students. So um, in this case, uh, the instructor wanted to uh, publish all the quizzes at once for the semester uh, and then notify students by email the day before the quiz uh, became available to remind them uh, there's going to be a quiz tomorrow and uh, go take a look. Um, so she couldn't add a recurring event in the calendar uh, that would send notification and she couldn't use sign up. Uh, the sign up tool has a, a reminder notification a day before an event. Uh, and she couldn't use that as a workaround because she would have to manually add every single student uh, to the sign up event every time she wanted it to go out, uh, which was not reasonable for a very large class. Yeah, I, I can definitely see the need for these kinds of um, notifications and reminders. I don't know if full calendar has anything kind of built in that would 
make this easier. Um, it's possible because it is a more modern um, calendar, which is why we were looking at it as a potential replacement for the current Sakai calendar. Um, but what this actually reminds me of is something that's um, on the roadmap um, is the notification service. Um, we've been talking about creating sort of a back-end service that would um, have sort of an event list that you could have um, notifications sent out based on, you know, items that are in that that event list. And, um, and the user could choose sort of how they want to be notified. If they want an email, if they want, you know, a text message, if they want some other channel um, to receive their notifications. But, um, but we were hoping to kind of centralize that into a, a system-wide service as opposed to having it in a particular tool. So um, I'm not sure if that adds anything to this particular JIRA, but it's, it's another thing that we have been looking at recently that has to do with notifications. So definitely want to make sure that these use cases are represented. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that would be good if, however it can be done, um, there's definitely been demand for uh, sort of recurring notifications um, and that kind of thing. I know we do have some new features uh, in um, 21, 22 for, for different types of notifications, um, like, uh, you know, the notification from grade book to ungraded students and that kind of thing. Um, and the reminder for unfinished assignments that are due tomorrow or something like that. But um, it, it would be helpful if instructors could schedule them uh, if they liked. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know what I might suggest, just because this, this JIRA is so old, um, there may be a new one um, gets set up that um, kind of reiterates some of what was said here, but just focuses on the notifications piece, because we might be able to tie that into that notification service work as opposed to tying it to the schedule tool. Okay, that sounds just, good. Yeah, I'm just thinking it might get more attention that way. Um, mm -hmm. First, it's an old one that's been closed for a while. Well, I mean, it was reopened, but yeah, there was another one um, that's linked there, uh, what was it, 13699, that was a duplicate, closed as a duplicate in 2008 <laughs> as well. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, sadly, uh, it, it has been killed on a couple of occasions. <laughs> uh, Dave says, uh, as soon as you open it, send us all a notification and we'll upvote it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll I'll create a new one. Um, so, just to be clear, we're gonna be put. Is there a is there a notifications component kind of thing? Um, I don't think we've created that yet. Um, let me let me ask Adrian and see if he had anything in there that he was thinking about for the component. But uh, yeah, just I'll, I'll check after the call and let you know. Um, so you'll know what component to select. If, if, if you can't find one, just put calendar on it for now. But, um, but hopefully we can get one for notifications because I think if we're going to develop that service, it needs to have a component so that we can tie things to it in JIRA. So um, I just don't want to create it if they were already planning to create it and call it something slightly different. So. Right, that makes sense. I mean, I guess I could add multiple components, so announcements, um, yeah. calendar, because those are all sort of notification services that have scheduling type capabilities, but right. none of them meets the need of, of this particular um, use case or right. set of use cases that have been presented to us. So any other thoughts on this one?
I had a thought, but it was taking me too long to type it out. This is Terry. <laughs> <clears throat> if you added to the drop down in the settings in tests and quizzes, um, where it says send notification or don't send notification, if you could add something that says send notification a week before due date or day before due date, that might be a more immediate solution for this particular use case than developing something totally new. I don't know. That's my question. That's a question mark, believe it or not. Well, yeah, so that's actually both tests and quizzes and assignments. Instructors have wanted the announcement or, um, or quiz notification to go out when the item becomes available to students instead of immediately on publish. Because what it does right now for both of those, if you make an announcement when posting a new assignment or uh, send the email notification when publishing a quiz, it sends out this email to the class that says, this assignment will be open on such and such date. This quiz will be open on such and such a date. And it includes a link to that thing but then if the student clicks on it before it's open, of course, they're going to get an error saying this isn't available yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if there was an option to say, you know, notify on um, at when when available or notify a week before or notify a day before due date. Yeah. Something like that instead of on publication. Yeah, and I echo that from Terry's perspective as well, because even in the context, this is broadening this conversation a little bit more, but even in the context of assignments, a lot of times my faculty set things as due at 11.55 p.m. And the notification inside of assignments says, by default, send it out 24 hours before. Well, I'm sorry. I think that our students are party animals sometimes, but I don't think they're all up and awake at 11.55 in the evening to actually see the notification. Yes, they can see it in their email but I have so many of our students that actually ignore the previous day like it never happened. And so they ignore the fact that the notification came out. So what good is the notification if it's ignored? Or like Terry's made mention of, or even Tiffany, when you said you click on the link and you go to the, go to see the link and you can't get to it because it's not open yet. So maybe we need several JIRAs, one for um, improving existing notifications coming from tools, and in this case, assignments and quizzes, to provide instructors with an option to schedule when that notification goes out. And I don't know that it would necessarily need to say, you know, when it's open, when it's whatever, maybe just have a couple of options. I want the notification to go out when it opens, or I want the notification to go out and schedule a date manually. because if you have to have some set of like before it's due, a day before it's due, you know, you have a huge drop down then and it's just not, it's right. unwieldy. So maybe just have two options. You know, I want notification to go out, well, three options, immediately now when I publish it, um, when it's uh, open, when it's open and at said date that I specify and the date being pre-populated with the open date. I right. like that idea. That, that yeah. simplifies the UX as well. Yeah. OK, so I will make another note here. And Tiffany, who knows? Tiffany, who knows? That may actually also help to inform the overall notification service in terms of how that functions by, by way of the UI across other things. Yeah, definitely. Because if there's certain patterns that we know are what people expect in various tools, when you kind of centralize it, you're going to want to make sure they use those same patterns. So um, that will definitely help scoping the, the different choices. All right, so any other thoughts on um, this particular issue? I know it's going to spawn a few additional JIRAs, but uh... um, Jordy mentions uh, that we talked about assignments in SAC 45031, and, um, and we did make a decision there that the um, announcement should go out uh, 
when the um, the assignment is opened uh, and not uh, when the assignment is published. Right. Um, so that, that was a, a request to change that. And I think that's a reasonable change um, that uh, the announcement is scheduled appropriately with the date of the open date. Yeah, that makes sense. Because a lot of people, they set up all their stuff at the beginning of the term. Um, you don't want, you know, 25 emails going out on day one. And then, you know, um, when the, during the semester, when things are actually opening up, no notifications. <laughs> so <laughs> makes sense to have it when the item opens. Or when the site's unpublished, right? So many instructors just want to create all their assignments at the beginning, you know, publish all the assignments or assessments yep. and then publish the site for the students to access so they can't even get the emails at the point when the, yep, the, absolutely. Uh, the notifications could be sent out. <laughs> All right, well we have um, only about five minutes left so I don't think we really have enough time to do another JIRA um, but if anybody has any thoughts for um, topics that they would like to do on our upcoming meetings. Our next meeting is going to be April 7th, I believe. Let me look at the calendar. Yes, April 7th. Um, so if you have anything that you'd like to discuss or something you'd like to demo for us, um, please let me or Charles know and we can put you on the agenda um, for the 7th. Otherwise, we'll just do Jirapalooza, so feel free to submit Jiras to discuss. And thank you again, Tiffany, for, um, for showing us the export feature. It looks really cool. Um, hopefully, we can get that incorporated um, at some point, and, uh, and everybody can take advantage of it. Yeah, I, I really would love uh, for some of our uh, local features to make it back to the community. Um, yeah, definitely. And I know Site I think, Builder is awesome as well. So if there's a way we can get both those things in, that would be a huge win. Yeah. I mean, we had been uh, told to to contribute Site Builder as a contrib project. But again, the problem is this is this code that is using some of the same back end uh, that was preventing Site Builder from going in um, is not separate code it's part of an existing tool so it's yeah. in samago yeah. it's, it's not it's not unique um and and standalone yeah we'll have to let the developers sort it out but <laughs> yeah um but thanks again for sharing with us and thank you guys for attending and i hope you will um, join us next time um in april so thanks again and you guys have a, a great uh, st patrick's day bye